Good day everyone. Today on the bench I'm going to tie up Kelsey's Hope. Here's a little fly that was designed by Nick, Nick Didlick over in BC. It was a fly named after his daughter Kelsey and uh, it's just an innocent looking little fly that we fished for many many years and uh, forget about how efficient some of these old flies are. We, we kind of get involved with some new patterns and try new things out, new materials. And we forget about these. I know Dale and I were chatting about it the other day and you know he said there really there's in his opinion and in his experience over the years has been there's no fly that has ever outfished a Kelsey's Hope in good clean water. So let's get um, the materials we need to tie the fly. I'm going to use a laser sharp Eagle Claw steelhead fly. This is in stainless steel. It's nice and bright. The uh, I'm going to use some Mylar size 12, silver Mylar for the body. And over the body I'm going to wrap that up with some monofilament and this is 12 pound test. You can use a little heavier if you want to get kind of a nice effect with that. The um, underwing we're going to use just some pearl crystal flash. And then the wing, here's some green polar bear, which I like using the polar bear. We like the polar bear the best if you can get it. It's hard to find. And I run out of blue polar bear, so I'm going to just going to put some blue bucktail. That's what the fly was originally tied with bucktail in. So if you can't get polar bear, bucktail will get the job done for you too. But it's a really nice simple little pattern and um, not only deserves an honorable mention, I know Don has tied this fly uh, on the show many years ago. It's been We've caught a lot of fish on it. You've probably seen a lot of the episodes over the years. There's been a lot of fish caught by this one. Okay, we've dressed the shank of the hook. I get some of my monofilament cut here and I'm just going to, um, instead of wrapping along the shank of the body, I'm going to uh, just pinch the end of it so it's flat with my plier and then tie it in at the rear. So basically, I'm not getting any bulk at all. You can't even see the tie-in point at that at all. I run my thread to the front. I like to take my uh, mylar and, um, and wrap it back and uh, and forth once back and once ahead uh, to get a nicer body. You, f you find if you're doing mylar bodies to, to wrap it that way you get a nicer uh, body. You don't get any lumpy action there. So I wrap it to the rear. Wind it forward. It's a good way of doing that body with the mylar. Tie that off good. Now I just put a half hitch in there. Not sure, give it another one. Okay, you can wind this by hand. I've got a rotary vise here, so I'm just going to get it started. Then you want to wind this monofilament. It's fairly close to itself. It's basically to give it some durability. You get a little spacing in there, that's that's okay too. You want to take your time, wind it up tight. That's great. That looks good. That's a nice nice strong body there. They can chew on that one all day long and they're not gonna hurt it. Gives a little different appearance too. Kind of adds some more. Uh, don't go right to the eye with that. Give it a little room for your head. Your tying point for your wing. Then we'll bring in no, 8, 10 or so or 12 strands of this pearl crystal flash. Just simple. Simple is good. And with that, and I just go past the bend. That peeks out a little bit off the back, that's okay too. I clip off some of my polar bear off the skin. And uh, grab the tips, pull out the underfur, keep that underfur, don't throw that in the garbage because that'll be able to blend that and make some really nice dubbing someday. You'll find a spot for that someday. Line up my tips in a hair stacker. We like a little more prominent, a little more green. Uh, it says green and blue. We'll lean on the green a little more. In the blue. Do that so it's 
nice on top of the shank. Bring in a little bit of our blue bucktail. Not too much under fur on that, of course, but then I'll just clip that off so it's a little bit not so long and I can get it in my stacker. Get those tips lined up. We were talking about this and that for coal flies the other day, and I'm just getting a, a bunch of these ready for our season. And uh, we'll probably, I don't know how many dozen we'll have coming on the road with us, but um, this is definitely fly that'll be in the box for when we get to the west coast. Our Dale and Don are out there filming. So we'll get them all supplied with good flies for out there, and this will be the definitely go to right when they're out there fishing. And just build a nice little head, whip finish it, and there you go. And uh, use some head cement on your flies or whatever uh, to make them more durable. Just take some in it. I'm going to take a little bit of this solar res, and even if it runs into the the hair a little bit back there, that's okay. That'll even reinforce it more. I, I have the hair tied in good and solid, but little insurance is always good. And then just get your lamp on there and cook that resin on and uh, you've got a very durable little fly and like Dale said he's just over the years it's, he's, he's tried he's compared this fly to so many others and it, especially in clean water he said there's just nothing else that'll, that'll compare to a Kelsey's Hope and it's, it's simple small and effective and there you go so here's one for you folks. We appreciate you watching uh, on the bench with us here at Sport Fishing on the Fly. We hope to see you again soon for another new or old pattern. Thanks for watching. To watch all our latest Sport Fishing on the Fly episodes and to order Sport Fishing on the Fly merchandise, head to www.sfotf.ca. And if you'd like to book an adventure like this one shown, head to onthefflyadventures.ca and book yourself the trip of a lifetime.